Hello and welcome to Deliberately Creative. I'm Stephanie and I want to welcome you to another drawing lesson from the sketchbook. This time we are doing Indian corn or ornamental corn. It's pretty colors, it has dry papery husk, and it's very fast, fun and easy to do. Come on and I'll show you how. I'm going to be working across long ways this time because I am going to do some ornamental corn. But what I'm going to do first is I am going to go ahead and very lightly with my pen sort of decide where the corn, the actual corn cob is. Just very, very lightly. You can hardly even see it. But by doing this, it gives me a very light framework to work on because what I want to do is put the husk in first. So this, the husk is kind of like doing paper ribbons. So the husk is starting back here at the back and I'm going to have one that goes up. It sort of, it goes up, up, up. It kind of curls back like this and goes back up and joins in. But then this right here is sort of a curl that's coming around like that and sticking out this side right here. So look at that. And then it's going to go up and meet into it on the top edge. And then where this long skinny triangle is going up over the top edge this way, somewhere down in here, Remember, there's, there's other stuff going on, but somewhere down in here, this is going to come up and meet in to the rest of the curl. We're going to be doing a few of them, so you'll, if you didn't understand what I just did, you'll get it by the time we're done. And then I'm going to go ahead and just give it some long linear type fibery lines. But I'm not going to do too much back here yet because I want to put another piece. It's just sort of dragging off. But again, it's kind of like a ribbon. So it's, you know, it's coming up and it's going under. So this one right here is coming from underneath of that top piece of this is a top piece of the husk. So now I can put a shadow in right there and some lines. This is the next one coming down. And you know, my lines are not necessarily all perfect. Remember, I'm doing this completely freehand without a pencil. You can use a pencil. You can use an eraser. You can get things the way you want them to be. I just have given myself the challenge of doing this without an eraser. So now there's going to be another one. This one's going to come up right along here. And 
it's going it's coming underneath of this and sort of does this down and there's an across and sort of a little twisty bit but what it's doing here is that this one is coming let's see there's another one coming across this way that's what it was and it's going underneath there see I'm looking at a reference photo I got the photo off of pixabay.com it's a free for artists reference with no um, copyright problems at least in general I won't say that for always I've heard that there's been some problems with, for some people so you know take that with a, a grain of salt since I'm just doing this for teaching and it's in my sketchbook it's not something that I'm making available I'm not too worried plus it's an air of corn I don't know how many people are really copywriting ears of corn uh, plus I'm looking at it and getting ideas comes across and then this one kind of across and then it just sort of twists like that look at that so we've got we've got all kinds of stuff going on here there's that one and then there's still some husk that's on here so I'm going to get a few of these things shadowed in because truthfully I'm going to put the little corn kernels in and we'll color the corn I'm not going to worry about coloring the husk that's sort of a supporting character it's not the it's not the lead the colored corn is going to be the lead character in this even though I'm spending quite a bit of time putting in the husks the husk actually gives you the setting for the for the lead characters to be in and let's see there's just going to be a piece that's kind of like that so what I just did there was make it so this ends up being husk down inside and reduce the area that I had to put in the corn so there so there take that mr. corn cob <laughs> so yesterday I did candy corn and today I'm doing an ear of corn there won't be anything corny tomorrow I promise unless my jokes count as being corny rr sorry I had to do it I really appreciate that you guys have been enjoying these videos and I love it when you guys are leaving me comments and asking for things this was a viewer request to do some ornamental corn so you never know ask and I may have a chance to put it onto my schedule so let's see this down here is still a husk get some long lines going on that and get some shadow down deep there we go and then this right here Be 
because that's that one that's underneath there. So we need a shadow here. There we go. And some long lines. Because that's that long, fibrous, kind of paper-like quality of the husk. I'm going to leave that one lighter. This one needs to have some lines put in, though. And there may end up being a little bit of some husk going that way. But this area right here is part of the corn cob. So I'm, I'm not cheating completely. There we go. And something that I learned about the uh, ornamental corn, it is actually edible. It has a very small amount of the hard starch, excuse me, has a very small amount of soft starch in it and a really large amount of a hard starch. So it can be ground into meals, meal. It can be used, um, hominy, uh, a type of soaked corn is the same kind of corn that is the ornamental corn. So as you're going back, the rows, the number of the rows stays the same. The corn just gets bigger as it goes away from the tip. So I'm giving myself some guidelines here. And then I'm going to go ahead and put some small circles in. There we go. Maybe bump those up just a little bit. And then the, the circles are not exactly circles. They're more like ovals. And they get bigger as they go back. And they actually do touch. And it's okay that I'm using this brown pen to put my corn in because there's shadows down inside. There's going to be colors on this. So these first ones here, these rows, I'm just doing my guessing by golly type of spacing. I'm not... I'm not measuring. I'm just looking at it going, okay, so the corn would be coming back here and getting bigger. See, just like that. There's corn that's going to be in shadow and corn that's going to be showing up. Now the hard, the, the flint corn, which is what the um, ornamental corn is. It's called flint corn because the kernels are as hard as flint. At least that's how I had it uh, described. And then and it was the kind of corn that the Native Americans taught the pilgrims how to grow to keep them alive. And there are certain types of this, the corn that actually looks like little gems. When I was doing my doodle gem series, I was looking at some of those 
going, oh, wow, it'd be cool to, to own some of that corn. Now, off the sides here, what I'm doing is I'm giving it a little bit of dimension and putting little half domes along those edges. See how that goes? Now, right now, it doesn't look like much. But when we go in, and first what we're going to do is I am going to go ahead and put some bright yellow and some yellow green together. And I am going to put that basically over all of the corn. Then we will go in and put shadows and highlights with different colors. Because even though some of that corn is kind of purpley pinky color or brick red color, those are all colors that work over the top of yellow. So, you know, that doesn't look like much still, but it's getting there. I'm going to grab some rusty brown color. And this is still wet in here. But what I want to do is go and give it a little bit of some shadowy lines that are subtle, <laughs> that are not, you know, totally in your face. but just, just something to kind of soften it up. I may even water down some of that a lot and put a little bit of that on the husk. Oh yeah, just a, just a bit, not a ton, just something to give it a little bit of color because it was A little bit hard to see what I was looking at there now that that has color on it I can see where I am and see what I'm looking at all right and what I'm looking at here is I want to get some more of that more of a, a brick red I want to put some brick red color in here and I am going to put it on my table on the on the paper because that was going to be whoa oh actually yeah I'll do it that way I'll just let it I need to keep my paper flat I'm just going to put some drops of that in here that's what we'll do because what it's doing is it's kind of flowing along those lines that I put in. <laughs> and starting to give us a little bit of some dimension. Well, that's fun. Now back here in underneath of all of that, I want some darker colors. I think I'm going to go ahead and grab kind of a violety purple. And I want it to be, there we go. I need it to be a little bit more um, fluidy. There it is, the word. The word was fluidy. I'm just dropping this into some of those spaces that are wet and then I'm going to dry off my brush and kind of soak some of that back up because that was a little too puddled actually if I want to do more stuff here I'm gonna to have to I'm going to have to blot. <laughs> now, 
have, remember, this is Ink Tense. Ink Tense is not a watercolor, but when you first apply it, when you first mix it with water, you are actually activating the ink. Then once it dries, it will be permanent. But while it's still wet, you can blot and you can flow. So it's kind of fun that way. You know, you, you can play with it like it's watercolor, but then I guess what it would be is kind of like really super staining watercolor. <laughs> That, won't, that doesn't like to move after you've put it down and let it dry. Oh, that's nice. That's actually a lot of fun. I like how it's sort of bleeding along. There we go. And maybe some... Actually, maybe some of this rusty brown and some of that purple. Ooh, that made a nice color. Let's get it just a little bit wet. There we go. So I don't want to cover up all of my bright yellow because that's sort of my highlights. And the corn is kind of like tie-dye almost. You, you have spaces where the, where the color is really one color. And then you have some of the corn, which is multiple colors. There we go. Yeah. see. Oh, I kind of like that. Now, this is not watercolor paper that I'm doing this on. It's that Strathmore 500 mixed media journal. But I love the paper. It is actually really nice. It doesn't... Um, sorry, I just realized I was slid off the screen. It doesn't buckle with the wet media. Um, at least I haven't been experiencing any buckling with wet media. I haven't been uh, experiencing any problems with even the markers. The markers don't bleed through the paper unless you are really, really saturating. And then it was only in a couple spots and not enough to interfere with the drawing or, or artwork underneath. So I really like that. I do think I want to dry this so that I can put a little bit of some highlights with my white, my white pen, or with the white, I don't know if the white ink tense is going to, I'm getting some of the white ink tense, and we'll see. I don't know if the white ink tense is going to, it's not, it's more gray, which is fine, but I want, I want a few spots that are brighter white than that. So I'll just put those on. Oh, I can use that as my sort of a shadow. There we go. Get a little bit of that really watered down on that kind of brown, maybe that brown and purple together to make sort of a gray color. That orange and purple. Uh, not so much. I want more water. There we go. Just like that. And now I'm going to grab my
go grab the blow dryer, dry this off. Ooh, maybe I'll even take some of that color up that way. That's kind of fun. And I'm not worried that it just started bleeding out a little bit. That's kind of fun. I don't usually do things that are quite so unstructured with my with my painting uh, for watercolor and such. I'm usually just a wash in my in my ink pictures. Okay, I'll be right back with this all dry and the white pen. So I hope that you've enjoyed this. If you have, please click that like button, subscribe to the channel, share the videos with your friends, make sure, oh yeah, there, that's better. That's nice because putting, and you don't put the white everywhere, you just put it on a few. And it, I'm so fortunate that you guys are willing to come along with me and just have some fun, peaceful time together. If you like this, please click that like button, subscribe to the channel, share with your friends, make sure to click the bell so that you'll be notified when new videos go up and leave me a comment. Let me know. Is there anything else you'd like to see me try to draw? As always, go out, do something creative, take care of yourself so you can take care of those around you. And I hope to see you back here again really soon. Bye-bye.